Well now, Monday, the 31st of January. That already. And I'm speaking on behalf of Larbert Baptist Church. And I want to give you a thought for the day. Well, two years ago, almost exactly, I attended a fraternal meeting in Glasgow at Annisland in Glasgow. It was a meeting of Church of Scotland, Free Church, Free Church Continuing, Baptist, Independent Ministers. I've been going to that fraternal for oh, quite a lot of years and have derived great benefit from it. But two years ago, I attended the fraternal. I remember it for two reasons. First, because due to coronavirus, it was the last fraternal meeting, as far as I know, that we've had at Annie's Land since. And there's another reason I remember it. I was the speaker at it. Usually, uh, we have speakers who come to us from outside our own membership. But occasionally, uh, we dive in among ourselves and one or another of us is called upon to speak. And I had been called upon to speak, to give a paper on the subject of communion with God, walking with God, a profoundly important subject for every Christian, but especially for pastors in charge of God's congregations. Communion with God is profoundly important. So I gave this paper and the third point that I made in that paper was this, to walk with God is to keep at God's pace and to walk in God's direction. And this involves, first of all, God guiding us in his word. That's a daily study of God's word the Bible, that we may be guided by God. But this also involves God guiding us in his way. There's a difference. The word is to be examined in, in detail. We are to discern the mind of God for us in the Word of God. But also God guides us in his way. There's a difference. 
when I was ordained in April 1959, that was God's direction. And that was his way. He was guiding me in the way. And ever since, that way has never been withdrawn. It is important that we keep God's pace and walk in God's direction. But in opening up these matters, I referred to my experience with these words. Though I intend no disrespect, yet even in Scotland, the land of my fathers, I am not where my eternal citizenship is. And so I go into my study and I open the book of God and my notebook and take my pens terribly old-fashioned, but then I am terribly old-fashioned, and bowing down my heart with adoration, I receive a letter from home. That is what the Word of God is to me. It is a letter from home. The Christian's home is where God's home is. The experience of becoming a Christian is a revolution. It is the experience of becoming a child of God, of entering into God's family. There is in the Christian a cry that awakens in his, in her heart. And it is a cry to God. Abba, Father. Those are the words that our blessed Saviour used in the Garden of Gethsemane. Abba, Father. And on two other occasions in the scriptures, those words are given to us. We cry, Abba, Father. The Father and the child belong to each other. I don't mean that there needs to be an audience. I can cry, Abba, Father, when there's nobody here. I don't need the oxygen of an audience to give vitality to that experience. It isn't a matter of learning a lesson. When a child 
looks at his mother or his father. He doesn't need to draw up a thesis for a doctorate in order to feel within very nature. This is where I belong. Abba, Father. This is how the Apostle puts it in Romans chapter 8. It is the witness of the Holy Spirit with our spirit that we are children of God. Abba, Father. It's the bedrock fact of the Christian life. So I go back to the Bible opened on my desk. My desk over there behind you, the other side of the room. A letter from home. Yes, but if it's a letter from home, it's the best of a bad job. Because if it's a letter from home, it means we're not at home. It's all we have at the moment. A letter from home. The New Testament has some graphic words to explain what it means to be a Christian in this world. We are exiles and aliens. Somehow we don't belong. Have you ever read John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress? If you haven't, you're missing a marvellous treat. But in part one of the Pilgrim's Progress, the pilgrims reach Vanity Fair. And it's a a marvellous description of what it is to be aliens and exiles. The pilgrims on their journey in Vanity Fair, they're not at home. Another description that the New Testament gives of the Christian in this world is sojourners. We're people living in temporary residence. Where we live is just a, a sort of bed and breakfast accommodation. We're on a journey. We're on a journey home. And the whole Bible is a sent out thing. It was posted in heaven. And it arrives by special delivery to the Christian's door. The whole Bible is a letter from home. You may say, oh, that's a very nice way to put it. Well, I'm not trying to be nice. I'm trying to be real. 
This isn't a religious sentiment. This subject is spoken with and into the throb of origination in the very soul to be a child of God and to bear the nature of God within the veins and arteries as it were of one's soul is to have entered into an experience that doesn't grow less with passing years but grows greater and greater with every passing day. To be a child of God and to have the impulse of the divine nature throbbing in one's soul is to enter into the experience of human nature experiencing that for which it was created. And for those who, who don't have that experience, then I think the prevailing domination in their life, though they would be reluctant to admit it, is of unmet emptiness. A sort of unfulfilledness in the inmost depths. It is to exist in a waste howling wilderness of what sin has caused. You see what I mean then when I, I speak with with gratitude of the experience of the Bible as a letter from home. If it's a letter from home, then home is not in sight. We can't see it. We can't hear the peal of the bells of home. We can't feel the grass of home's meadows under our feet. And yet, the letter, we look at it, we unfold it. We read it. We re-read it. We look at it. We think about it. I have to confess there are times as I sit at my desk and study the Word of God. Tears of longing for home cloud my vision home oh what it will be to be at home and to be with all the glorious family of God 
and to see the family likeness in every eye and to see that wonderful variety and individuality on and on everyone a member of the family and yet everyone unique in his or her own right what a thing it is oh what will home be like That's what I mean. But um, those uh, who live supposing that reality is only to be comprised in what we can see or hear or feel poo poo all this. And they say, you're living in cloud cuckoo land. In Psalm 137, it's a sad little psalm. The people of God's holy land have been invaded and they've been captured and they've been taken away captive into Babylon and we read that they that plundered us requested of us mirth saying sing us one of the songs of Zion you ridiculous exile all moaning about Zion. Well, go on. Give us a giggle. Sing one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of Zion in a strange land? We're not at home. And yet, I rejoice. We read in Psalm 119, verse 162, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. What is it? It's a letter from home. Do you know what that is? Have you the experience of it? There are various sonnets by William Shakespeare that I've memorised. And this one I've quoted before, but I quote it again because it's it's so apt in this sonnet there are five bleak questions to which there is absolutely no answer to be given and the gloom in this sonnet just grows deeper and deeper and deeper until you think well there's no way out but then right at the end Shakespeare absolutely changes everything this is how it goes. Since brass, nor stone, nor earth, nor boundless sea, but 
sad mortality or sways their power. How with this rage should beauty hold a plea whose action is no stronger than a flower? Oh, how shall summer's honey breath hold out against the wrackful siege of battering days when rocks impregnable are not so stout nor gates of steel so strong but time decays. Oh, fearful meditation. Where, alack, shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid? Or what strong hand can hold his swift foot back? Or who his spoil of beauty can forbid? Oh, none. Unless this miracle have might that in black ink my love may still shine bright. That's what I mean. A letter Well, there you are. I pray God you know the experience of it. God bless you.